hello and welcome to a, another video that's not a Magic the Gathering video. So this is um, Boxing Day of 2019. I hope those of you that are friends of the channel um, are enjoying the, the budget themed 12 Days of Christmas video. Uh, 12, 12, 12 repacks of Christmas I think it's called. Um, that, are, that are currently going out. So what I thought I'd do um, is a video about something that is not Magic the Gathering. I do these videos you know, not super regularly. They crop up every few years where I just do a video about a random thing that I'm interested in that isn't Magic the Gathering. So we're going to do um, a go through uh, a State of the Collection 2019 to give it its official title. So State of the Collection video of my watch collection. I think probably most people wouldn't necessarily know that I collect watches. I did on one video do a wristwatch check um, and it wasn't really, I don't think, ever commented so I was waiting to see whether anybody would buy it and uh, so I didn't go down that rabbit hole at that point but at some point I've always fancied doing a, a watch themed video and this is it. So this is my State of the Collection 2019. Um, Welcome to anybody that none, don't normally doesn't watch the channel and is purely watching this because it is a state of the collection watch video. Um, I hope you'll check out some of the Magic the Gathering related videos if that's sort of something you're interested in. So I'm going to run through this collection. I'm going to try and get this in chronological order. I don't have anything in here that's super old. Um, this watch currently on camera is my trusty Timex Expedition which I'm going to start with in a moment. It was bought in 2008 when I visited Nova Scotia for the first time, purchased from Mech um, in Halifax, which is like an outward bound um, and, you know, uh, activities based um, um, shop, which, you know, does all sorts of things, running gear, camping gear, um, the odd watch. And basically it was bought because I gifted um, my soon-to-be wife my Casio film watch. Um, so the film watch isn't going to be on here. Uh, sadly it had an altercation with a door handle at some point in its life. Um, it is still in the house. It's put away somewhere safe but it's um, rather badly cracked so that's not going to be on here. Um, so it, and any, yeah, anything preceding 2008 either um, it is something that I don't routinely wear or I've gifted um, so there's a watch I got when I left a firm uh, many about I don't know 20 years ago probably um, which I sort of keep for sentimental value but I don't routinely wear it it's quite a nice Loris and it was a beta watch for a while actually about a couple of years um, so that sort of predates this current collection also my, my Seconda, I've got a manual wind Seconda, which was manufactured when they were they had a factory in Russia and were using Russian movements. Um, nice watch actually, very simple domed um, glass um, crystal on it. Um, remarkably unscathed, considering it's, but it's domed and the fact that I did wear it um, quite a lot at one point, so much so that the, the actual strap has sort of disintegrated it wasn't a good that good a quality leather strap on it but it, it has over the years fallen apart and so what I did with that is I put it on a um, I put it on a silicon black strap it looks really good on that it's got Roman numerals on it and um, gave it to my my wife actually actually only about six months to a year ago I think uh, because I, I wasn't really wearing it and I know she loves the, the watch so she could get a lot of enjoyment out of that. Um, and uh, we've actually got for Christmas a new black sort of fake um, crocodile. Um, crocodile sort of skin style strap um, that looks really good on the watch. So so I know she'll, you know, um, well, she can't really wear it more than she's currently wearing it. But it looks basically a bit, little bit nicer than the silicon strap that's on it. And the trouble with silicon straps is sometimes they do tend to attract quite a bit of fluff and stuff like that if you're wearing them regularly. So, so that won't be here. Um, what else have we got? That's not held. I've got a Seconda Moon watch that that I need to 
um, have a look at um, and see why it's not functioning. That's a quartz one and that predates this collect collection. Um, and a number of other watches that just basically, I suppose one way or another, just bit the dust, weren't worth really refurbishing. Um, I've had a few Casios over the year, at the cheaper end of the range, where the straps have just basically, you know, fallen apart over continual usage of being a beta watch. Um, I probably have a, what is it, an F91W, I think they call it, at some point. I had a um, one of their cheap Casio um, calculator watches, which is the one that's still in production, the sort of bottom of the range one. Um, that I'm thinking about getting another one of those. I, I'm actually not sure what happened to my original one. Again, I know the strap disintegrated, but the watch was still functioning before I came over to Canada, but I just don't know where it is at the moment. It's probably in a box somewhere. Um, and, uh, you know, and like I said, there's a, a few other watches which I've either gifted or have just completely disintegrated because they weren't of a particular high quality. Um, I did sadly lose one watch um, one time, um, which um, isn't here, and uh, that was that was uh, many years ago. Um, but I don't know if it would even be still functioning now if I still had it without a you know without good service. And the, that's the other problem with a lot of watches is sometimes you have to decide is is the watch get worth getting service because you you know does it have enough sentimental value to you to basically get it working or is it just better to just buy another another watch if, it, if you haven't spent an awful lot of money in the first place so anyway just so you can get a feel for the you know the uh, the environment in which these this collection exists so um, 2008 I came over to Nova Scotia on a visit um, as I mentioned I gave my what my wife my um, my Casio film watch and I purchased this very simple uh, Timex Expedition, just has um, a date window on it. It's uh, Indiglo, water resistant, 50 meters, has both 12 and 24 hour clock on it. You can't really see the Indiglo on here, it's really good. The original strap long um, gave up. This was my beta watch for probably six plus years from 2008 onwards. Um, it's remarkably unscathed. I don't know if you can see there are one or two scratches on the acrylic crystal on there. Uh, the strap is now this NATO strap. Um, the original strap was black, but um, what what they did on on those ones was where the um, holes where the buckle goes through are. They had like a brown area of leather, and the, what happened was that brown area of leather sort of became um, or fell apart from the nylons, the heavy nylon strap that it was part of. Um, so I replaced it with this NATO. With this style of expedition watch, you are the you are rather limited in watch straps you can use because where you would normally have the spring bar, that's actually integrated into the uh, into the watch itself. So that's the the first watch in the collection. So uh, and that that watch I wore you know exclusively for a number of years, and then probably about five years ago. On a trip to the UK, um, I bought this. Now I'd had my eye on, uh, I, I wanted to get a gold Casio of some description for quite a while. And my original plan was just to buy a regular Casio in gold. But then I was uh, in a, a shop in a little village called Nutley, uh, looking at, uh, surprise, surprise, looking in a jeweler's window at the watches with my wife who also has an interest in watches. Um, and I saw this um, massively reduced. I can't remember how much I paid for it, but it was well under what it was, uh, what the original, um, art, you know, sale price was for it, the original um, listed price. And this is actually a data bank watch. It's uh, got the usual function in it, you know, of the, um, the current time. There's the data bank area, uh, alarm, uh, stopwatch. Um, you've got your um, what do they call it? Like the countdown timer, and then uh, it's also got dual time on it. So the reason why I'd sort of like these style of Casios is they have this rather nice um, clasp on them, on the uh, on the strap, which I find works really well for me. 
um, in terms of fitting them. So what happens is you just, this bit here, if you can see that on camera, you just flip that up and you can move this backwards and forwards to get it to really resize. And I find that this size is really well for me. Um, so yeah, I'm a big fan of this style of, of watch. You don't have to basically, you know, start taking any of these out um, like you do on some other watches. It's not, you know, the the band itself is pretty cheap. You can see if you look closely, that's not solid links in there. They're folded over. Um, but, you know, it does its job. It doesn't get, I don't find it catches anything, doesn't catch any hairs. Um, and the watch itself, apart from the fact that it, you know, it is a plastic case, does look pretty nice in there. Haven't worn it that much, um, but it has been worn. Um, and the, the fact that I find the large, um, you know, the large uh, characters on it really helpful. So then I come on to a couple of watches um, which were probably bought around, I don't know, five years ago, four or five years ago, um, in Canada. Both, both bought in department stores. So this one... Um, I've always wanted, at one point I had like a, you know, all, well, it's again, the case is plastic with uh, silver. Um, as you can see, there's the under underlying color of the, uh, of the case. Um, the case is plastic with like a silver paint on it to match the strap. Again, it's got this sort of style of um, Casio strap that I really like. This was bought, bought from Sears in, I think, somewhere in New Brunswick when we were out. I think we'd gone to a concert and we'd stayed overnight. And then the next day, we just did a bit of shopping and went into Sears. Um, just because we were, I think, going to meet someone in the shopping centre over there at the uh, cafe. And um, I saw this, like, massively reduced. I'd had a, a Casio... Uh, real cheap Casio uh, solar watch before uh, that had again bitten the dust because the strap had just sort of disintegrated and it just wasn't really worth re replacing at the time. Um, this would have been, I mean, that watch probably would have been pre-internet. So this one, like I said, bought in the last four or five years. The big problem with these, I find, and maybe someone finds this with this style of cheapest, um solar watch we'll come on to some more expensive ones in a moment but this style of uh, sort of digital solar watch it's fine if you're one of these people that you know wears a lot of t-shirt they're in an area of the world where it's fairly sunny all the time or at least there's enough sun this thing will keep charge real well um, the problem i have is i'm you know i tend to wear long sleeves of uh, the sort of Complexion I am, I tend to burn up in the sun um, if I'm not careful. So I tend to go for that way of sort of keeping covered up. Uh, so I, I wear long sleeves and often day to day this cut, this watch can just get covered under under a, a sleeve and uh, will uh, therefore not be charging properly. And I've had a few occasions where it's just sort of stopped working. So this I tend to leave in the, the window of the house. It was actually a beta watch for a while. Um, I think for, you know, I wore it solidly for about a year. Uh, you can see there that it started to wear on the, the corners of the paint there where it's sort of been rubbing against various things. And there's a few dings there where probably it's hit the side of a, um, a doorknob. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, something that I, that I have in my collection. I'll probably gift it to someone at some point, maybe, um, but uh, I, I keep thinking about doing that and then think, well, it's, it's you know, and it's a nice enough watch. Um, and uh, so that, that is actually stayed in my collection at the moment. And then around about the same time, I was in the bay um, and I saw this. So this is a, a series that Timex did of like retro inspired watches. So this one I bought about, I don't know, four or five years ago. Uh, it's got Indigo on there, which is the same technology they use in there, you know, the, the Timex uh, expedition you just saw. And um, the um, 
The strap is came like this. It's like a distressed denim strap with a leather back to it. Uh, it's got the usual features. It's pretty stripped down in that it has uh, the time, obviously, and then an uh, alarm and a chronograph, you know, like a timer. And then we're back to the regular time again. So no dual time, no um, countdown timer for counting... Uh, how long your eggs been boiled for, anything like that. But it's a pretty nice colour scheme on. It's quite unusual. And um, if I ever had to just replace this uh, distressed denim here, what I'd probably do is try and find maybe a silicon strap, which was the same colour as this sort of dark blue here, and uh, maybe use that on there. But yeah, it's a pretty cool watch. Was a you know probably I wore it for about a year, and it was my main be to watch. So now we start moving to an area of watches where um, I do have a pretty good idea about when they were purchased down to the, almost the month actually. But before I do that, um, last, you know, again, one of the last watches where it was bought in the sort of 2000, um, 2008 to sort of 2017 18 period which is the, the this is a gift from my wife it's um a Kenneth Cole digital watch it's pretty interesting because it's really heavy because this case is not plastic it's actually metal um, you can see on the underside it's got regular stainless steel and then this has a, a black coating on it on here other interesting things about this watch is the button on the side, what that does is that activates the functionality. The top of this watch is actually touch sensitive. So what happens is if you want to do anything like, you know, use the stopwatch, change the mode, um, set the times, activate the light, you activate that first and then you press the appropriate functionality. Uh, this is also interesting in that it's a, it's a world time watch. It does have actually two, you can set two times on here, um, the regular time on the front and what they call the world time, which is on here. But um, you just you just scroll through all the times. So it has all the time zones on um, in each of those positions that you can go through. And you just have to basically prick whatever um, city it has which is relevant to your particular dime zone if it doesn't have your particular city in there. Also it has daylight savings time switch so you can switch between the two which I find really useful because you can set that independently on both of the times that are on here. So for both of the times you can go through and set any time zone but you can also set DST on either one either on or off and that's quite useful because um, daylight saving time, the, the switchover is actually different um, Sundays in both uh, Nova Scotia and in the UK, which is where the second one is set to here. And so that's quite a useful feature to be able to do that. So now we move on to watch purchases from uh, 2018 onwards. So those, those what, one, two, three, four, five watches were all built, bought over like a 10 year period from 2008 to 2018. So a pretty modest watch every what, two years probably, either bought or gifted. Now things start to get a bit more intense. So from 2018, 2018 onwards, um, yeah, that's when my watch collection really started to expand. So, first watch I bought 2018 again I was in um, the bay and I wanted to buy a Timex Weekender just a fun little watch no date or time on it like a casual watch and I saw this and it was in in their sale I think it was like 20 or 30 bucks basically um, nice easy reader it's got 24 hour uh, markings on it as well um, you know, the colour of the uh, second hand is like reflected in the strap. Very simple strap. Again, on the this model, um, there's no push pins. Oh no, there are actually, sorry, my mistake, there are on this. 
so you can you know pretty much have any strap it came the reason why i think through me is it came with one of these straps that goes through and on there but yeah you can sorry you can basically use any style of strap on this which would complement that and be the right size but uh, very simple to read not nice weekend watch has indigo on it i'm not too sure what the water resistance on this is it's probably not great oh it's good to 30 meters so um it's basically splash proof probably shower in it um but beyond that um you know be warned Okay, so now things start to get a bit out of hand. Um, so June 2018, um, there was some quite major, I say major, a bit of restructuring going on at work. So I did a little bit of overtime to just help with the transition and um, as a consequence of that, I had about, wasn't a ton of overtime, I had a, about $200 burning a hole in my pocket, as I would say. So I was thinking about, you know, upping, upping my sort of watch, um, watch collection a little bit. And um, I bought two watches together. Originally I was gonna buy one watch and I'd sort of thought about buying a, a Seiko, I think it was a sea urchin, but at the time they were rather overpriced for what I thought they were. Um, so, and I just, part of what I wanted to do is I wanted to buy a mechanical watch. I didn't have a mechanical watch in my collection. And, but I, then I wanted to have a diver because I didn't have a diver. And then I noticed that at that point, this, the classic um, Seiko, uh, 809 here with the uh, display case back which is you know I think out of a lot all the watches that are automatic this is the the one watch that seems to always get recommended to people to buy it's quite a nice you know reasonable if you've got a smaller wrist it, it sits well on the wrist but it's also got that sort of small military watch um, vibe aesthetic to it you see the hands there it's got the um, it's got the, the the seconds hand the second markers around the outside and then the hour markers around the inside also these very sort of classic looking hands pretty nice And with this particular, this is a Seiko 5, so it's automatic. There's no hand wind on it. So if you need to uh, set it running when it's not running, you do the Seiko shake. And you can see there the, um, the mechanism in there. And you can see that sort of part of it there moving around, which is how the, uh, how the spring is wound up. In there and it can it, you know it can go either way it winds through through e going in either direction and of course the idea with an automatic watch is as you're wearing it during the course of the day moving your hand around um, the watch becomes automatically wound it doesn't hack so that means that when you go to set the time the um, second hand keeps running so one trick you can do is you can actually move this which changes the time to such a point where the handle actually stop so you can set it at a sort of super accurate time if you want to spend the time to do that they keep pretty good time oh i'm going to show you a series of seiko fives here same movement in here um 7s 26c in this one um so yeah that's what goes into this the the diver style watch i bought was the good old casio Jura. so good down uh, to 200 meters solid watch screw down case back um rubber strap can't go too wrong with that you've got the bezel which clicks round it's quartz um, so it's going to be accurate on there 
and uh, underneath there you can't see it very clearly because of the time at the moment but it's uh, got a single day uh, sorry date single date window in there as opposed to the um, Seiko which is a day date um, and one other thing on these Seikos is there's a quick adjust so if you pull this all the way out that's how you adjust the time if you pull it out one click which is often difficult to do one way adjust the day and the other way way adjust the date so yeah so two for the two for one there um, and and also yeah these were very reasonably priced at the time I think this this price in Canada the price on this watch in Canada varies between about forty to sixty dollars for the Casio Dura. Um, at the time, I think this particular model in Canada was around seventy to eighty dollars. Now they've gone up because they they're a popular watch. Um, most of the time, these are well over a hundred dollars now, which I found is the case with an awful lot of the Seiko fives, unfortunately. Um, and I bought mine at what now I realise was the right time. Um, before they started sort of going up in price because um, what happens is it's the same you know it's that YouTube phenomenon where um, as people do watch reviews of certain watches they get popular and people buy them and then the price tends to go up even up on the new items <clears throat> so the next thing I wanted to get hold of was another Casio and at that point you know, I thought, well, I need to just get a few reasonably priced classic pieces from my collection. Um, but this one is is one of my favourites anyway. You know, it doesn't just sit in the collection. It isn't my beta watch, but it is my travel watch. Uh, or anywhere when I'm, yeah, basically anywhere I'm going where I need the time zone features on here. So this has five alarms. It has four time zones. Um, which are actually illustrated on the map. The map sort of, you can't see that very clearly, but it lights, illuminates um, based on where your time zone is. Um, so in here you can have four four time zones, which are accessed through the search function. So we've got uh, New York City time, which would also be Toronto, uh, London, and uh, the aptly named Party. Um, see, because you've got Paris, P-A-R, and then T4, which is time zone four, so the party time zone. And of course, all these can be independently set. So, you know, you can set these time zones to whatever you, you want, the current time zone. This is obviously Halifax time or um, Atlantic, Atlantic time. Um, but yeah, very useful watch, great for travel. I've been swimming in this, um, no problems at all. 100 meter, water resistant, 10 year battery in it. Um, then the the dial on here, uh, mainly for effect, it basically shows you what the, the time is down here, the, the main time. So of course, what's nice about this is I'm traveling to the UK, I get on the plane in Halifax, um, and then at some point on the flight, I just press it a couple of times and I've got the, the London time ready to go. I'm going to play around with the watch. And then at the top, it's still showing Halifax time. So pretty cool. All the usual modes on here. Uh, there's, a, there's actually a world time as well underneath all of this. Um, there's the alarm, a timer, stopwatch, and then back to your what you call your local time. On there. So, oh yeah, the, the strap isn't too bad. You do have to adjust it. It's not like the other Casio. It's a slightly heavier strap again. It's um, this sort of folded metal in there. And so to, to adjust the strap, you have to get inside there with the appropriate sized. Um, I use actually one of the most appropriate sized things that I use is actually one of the tools on my um, my pen knife. But I've since have uh, sort of more more specifically designed tools to do this. Uh, which can help with with adjusting this. You just basically have to get it inside of there, where that hole is, and then push the uh, the metal strip in here out, and that allows you to then properly pull it out and adjust these. This has probably had two or th probably three 
uh, taken out of it and I've slightly adjusted the micro adjustment there but yeah they're pretty nice watches um, and definitely if you don't want a super expensive Casio I paid $41 for this um, back in 2018 when I ordered it so then I went down having started with this which you've just seen I went down the Seiko 5 rabbit hole so the first Seiko 5 I bought was this you try and get this right so this is an SNK 789 okay and these I actually this is going to be useful because I can look at the, the numbers so the Seiko I previously showed you was an SNK 809 Okay, so that's an 809. And this one here is the SNK. There we go, so I get it on camera and in focus. That's the 789. So white dial, red second hands, date, day and date. Thirty meter water resistance, same movement as in the watch I've already shown you. Um, display case back. So I think all of these watches with this movement have around a forty hour power reserve on them. So if they're fully wound up, um, they'll go for forty hours. So they go for a couple of days. Oh, actually, it's pretty easy to see. So that there is a a different ring in this in the scent in the dial itself so there's like an outer ring which looks like it's sort of brushed in one direction and then an inner ring these have pretty good loom on them um, all of the Seiko 5s the the um, the glass on this it's something called Hardlex which is their sort of brand of, of sort of toughened glass on there I've hadn't had any problems with it although admittedly I think all the the doorknob hits on this have occurred on the on the side of the watch and you can see there's one there but yeah the nice nice size watches again this one had to be adjusted because it's on the metal bracelet it's pretty well So that was that one that was actually 86.99 the trouble with the Seiko 5s now is that the prices have gone well over 100 bucks unfortunately because they're proving to be really popular um, you know people that are sort of trying to or getting into collecting watches find that they are a good starting point for a like a mechanical if you're if you're into collecting mechanical watches you know, good reliable movements pretty keep pretty good time so next Seiko 5 SNK K27 so this is still 2018 so we're into August now um, so it felt like I was buying a watch a month and I probably was um, again not you know not super expensive when I bought it for, for, for what these are uh, this was around 99 bucks same movement as the other one you can see different style quite a different style of dial on this uh, with that sort of first 20 minutes with a different color scheme lovely blue dial on this I don't know how well this is coming up on camera excuse me I've just smudged that this is where you need a pair of nice white gloves for this sort of stuff similar sort of strap slightly different style um, you can see there's a bit of wear on this all of these Soko fires I bought to be worn um, and for the last year at least um, I've been wearing these regularly I've sort of been rotating them daily but you know wearing them at least you know at one point I was wearing a different one every day or a different one each week that's sort of set up um, and you know every morning I had to sort of basically do do the shake for a little while because again 
These um, don't have any ability to hand wind, they're 100% automatic. Um, but yeah, very, very nice color watch. Um, I actually bought a, a strap for it, just a simple orange silicon strap, which I did wear for a while, but I actually went back to the bracelet because I do like the, the style of bracelet that's on here, even though it's getting a bit worn now. So then I went for another Seiko 5, but in a slightly different style. Um, one of my favourite design watches is say, a, um, Audemars Piguet AP um, a Royal Oak, which has this sort of hexagonal case, which looks very much like a porthole. It's got these sort of screws, but you know, APs are rather expensive. So I wanted a hexagonal shaped watch. So I thought, well, I didn't know Seiko do this one, it's a Se another Seiko 5, so same movement. Um, again, that sort of two, two sort of subtones to the dial, sort of an inner and an outer. It's all, this is all, you know, gold tone watch, it's not real gold, it's just gold tone. Again, that similar strap, not, you know, fairly cheap strap, but with this, the straps sort of semi-integrated so you couldn't replace this with a regular strap you'd have to get a converter for this if they do actually make one um, but it's a nice watch it where it feels like super comfortable when you put it on your wrist um, and um, but what's interesting is it rides a bit high or appears to from certain angles and that makes it look like it wouldn't be that comfortable but it is a very comfortable watch it sort of stays on the wrist well, even if you'd like to wear it a bit loose, which can be a sum of problems with the other Seikos, where there's a lot of weight in the centre of the, the watch, and so that means it tends to move around a lot, whereas this, it's sort of spread out over a wider area, and just the way it sits. Um, but again, you know, display case back, same movement. Um, again, you know, it has to be uh, moved to be... Uh, to be wound. So that was around, that was 105. So up to that point, I think that's the most I ever had spent on a watch. So to finish off my Seiko 5 collection, so I had this joke about I'd, I'd get five Seiko 5s and then that would probably be it in terms of the Seiko 5s, is this watch. So this is one of the SNKLs. Um, there's a series of these. Oh, yeah, by the way, just in case you're keeping track, so track on, the, on the numbers, this is an SNK K52. And the previous one, which was this, was an SNKK27. So back to the SNKL19. So the, this is one of three watches that are very similar and the differences are in the dial colours, I believe. Um, this is a nice looking strap on it. Actually, there's a bit more weight to this strap than the others, though so that's the way it feels. It's still got that rolled metal strap on it, which I know isn't always super popular with people, and it, it does make it a lot lighter. I find them nice They're, in terms of, actually, I find them easy to, to remove links on these, just because I've just got the right size thing that goes into that, where you remove the link. Um, same style of clasp on this, locks down. Never had a problem with these sort of unlocking. Um, this one isn't quite as badly worn as my other one. Um, although I was wearing this pretty much every day, um, <clears throat> I tended to pick days to wear it where I knew I wouldn't be moving equipment around, so it was less likely to get hit again. I think there's one or two close calls there with, uh, I've come, come up against some sort of security door as it swung back on me and sort of caught me. So uh, I suppose at least it's catching it on the watch and not as sometimes happens in my back or on a, in my ribs or somewhere like that. So this one, one thing to note with these is these are quite fiddly to change the time. Um, in the earlier Seiko 5 I showed you, this thing here is so uh, you pull it all the way out to adjust the time 
and it's just the first click that comes out is how you do the day and the date quickly. Um, the problem is this is actually very, very close to the case. So it's quite tricky to do. And occasionally, um, my fingernails for me are fairly long at the moment, or not getting on the longer side. And I tend to keep my nails fairly short because I'm always catching them on various things. Um, particularly if I'm sort of reaching inside a, machine, you know, a computer or pulling it apart. It's amazing how you catch on the outside edges of computers, stuff like that. So um, I'm constantly nicking these and then having to, so I always keep them fairly short anyway. And so when they're short, I can be quite difficult to adjust this. But one advantage I have found with the Seiko 5, with it being at the four o'clock position, Admittedly, that gold one I showed you, it is at the conventional three o'clock and it is out. But these ones that are at the four o'clock, um, it's great, I think. And I know my wife likes these and often wears the, these watches. Um, if if you wear, you like to wear your watch a bit loose. Um, one thing you find is when the, when the dials um, when it's at three o'clock and it moves around, it sort of rubs up against your arm. And with this, it doesn't, it's sort of out of the way anyway, and it's also recessed. So that really helps. So if, if you're prone to wearing loose watches and you like that sort of size of the Seiko 5 and the prices haven't gone up too much, this was 111 when I bought it, but I think it's gone up. The white dial version of this and the black dial I don't know how much they are, but of course what happened with, with the white and the black is there was a few high profile videos on them. Um, I think I think there was one that was called the, you know, the million dollar watch that doesn't cost a million dollars, something along those lines, very similar to that. Um, because they the, the, the white one looks super nice. This is super nice. I mean, it wasn't a problem for me buying this one because I wanted a grey dial watch. I wanted one with the Dauphine hands, which they all have. Um, and I just like the style of the, the things like the 12 o'clock marker. All of the Seikos we've looked at all have loom on them. So, you know, so providing, they, providing they've had enough light on them, um, particularly sunlight is very effective for this. Um, they glow in the dark. Um, and what I've noticed about these, if I just walk in the sunlight for a couple of minutes and they're exposed, when I go back inside, you can really see the loom glowing on that. So with that watch, we're now up to September. So I'd sort of had my run of um, automatics. And what I wanted to do is I'd become interested in citizens. And there was this particular citizen which I'd had my eye on for quite a while. Um, I sort of wanted a real pure, well, this isn't actually that pure, um, but I was sort of going down the dress watch avenue and I wanted something that was rather larger um, and had a few interesting features to it. So this is part of their EcoDrive line. So these are solar powered and this is like, you know, obviously higher end solar power. So this thing, if it's been, if it's fully charged, it will go for six months without a charge. But I tend to sit these um, close to a window so that there's no problem. You can tell when they're low on charge because when the second hand ticks, it goes every two seconds and that tells you that the, the watch is getting close to being undercharged. It's a nice black strap with those sort of um, little green stitching on there, which matches the the green paint. Now what's interesting about this is, um, is that isn't loom. It looks very bright, but it's just the, that that's just a color because that's the style of the watch. So this isn't, it isn't, doesn't have any loom on it at all. Um, and you know, a lot of dress watches won't have loom on them. Um, just that's often part of the style, but yeah, very fairly simple, just has a, um, a date window there keeps good time you know it's a, it's a quartz underneath it all um, and of course you don't need any batteries it's Japanese movement in here 
I don't even know what they're... It's water resistant to 10 bars. Um, yeah. Nice watch. You can see it's been worn a little bit there. You can see it's starting to to do now that's mainly because there's actually a second layer to this so there's it's a, it's a genuine leather but it has this top layer and that's one thing that I'm finding with a, an annoying with a lot of watches and also a number of uh, a number of belts is you have this sort of second layer here this outer layer and often what happens is you can see there it starts to become almost detached from the the strap itself so you often end up replacing straps simply because this has become um, you know, detach from the rest of the strap. So that was up, that was the most expensive watch I'd bought up to that point. So that was $140. Um, but I still was after a chronograph style watch. And the problem I had was a number of the Seikos that I were looking at, at that point in time, um, I was having problems justifying to myself how much I wanted to pay for a Seiko chronograph. Um, for some reason, the prices were relatively high on a lot of the ones I was looking at. And I had looked at a number of quite nice vintage chronographs, but I was rather worried as to you know, what sort of what I was getting. So I noticed that the Timex Expedition series did a rather nice Timex Scout, which is a quartz chronograph. And there's a couple of these in with a blue dial. This is the more muted blue dial one. There is a one with a much brighter blue dial to it. So it comes on a, a reasonably nice brown strap. It was already sort of this pseudo distress look to it. A bit of... Um, red stitching on there water resistant to 100 meters so you can quite easily go swimming in this no problem and how this functions so basically you've got your regular adjustment here for your um for your time i think there is a quick date on this as well i'm not sure i'm not going to try it Normally you can tell because there's two stops to this. No, there isn't actually. This hasn't this isn't got quick adjust on it. So you basically have to do the thing where you have to wind it past tw um, one and then wind it back to ten and go backwards and forwards and if you're trying to you know, go forward by a lot of days. So the chronograph part here, so there's our, our large second hand. And that's why the second hand, when you're not using the chronograph, stays at 12 because the real second hand for the watch is actually on one of the small dials down there these other two dials are to do with a 20th of a second which at the moment doesn't appear to be moving but when you stop the watch it goes to where the 20th of second would have got to so it doesn't show the actual 20th 20th of a second time until you click the stop on the chronograph and then you press this to reset it all so for the chronograph it's the big hand the 22nd sub dial 20th of second sub dial and this which records up to 30 minutes of it so once this clocks round a mi so many minutes obviously this starts to move and then down here you can see Here's the regular seconds hand that's sweeping round. Again, it's a quartz, so it's clicking round, it's ticking round there. It's not a you know a smooth movement. If you look at an automatic, one thing you'll notice on an automatic is you don't get that sort of ticking by the minute. It's it's sweeping because the subdivisions are a lot smaller on there. So yeah, pretty nice watch. It's a nice weekend watch, and yeah, it's my only only chronograph. Um, I only really wanted one, um, and that was it. And that was very reasonable. I definitely thoroughly recommend this watch. It's um, fifty was fifty three bucks, which is a very good price when I bought it. I, again, I have no clue what it is now. 
Okay, so that was up to December 2018. So we're now moving into what still is this year, 2019. So let me just filter this down off camera so I can get some idea of what's going on. This video is probably pretty long now. If I didn't at the top of the video, I should have, oh, 50 minutes already, I should have um, advised everybody to get, grab their favorite beverage because this, uh, this is going on. Okay, so moving into the new year, um, I wanted to get hold of a bit of a design classic. This is not what they call an AW10, but it's close enough. So this is the Braun. Um, so very simple looking watch. The case is actually metal on there. Just hours, minutes, seconds. Are you going to focus for me? There we go. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea putting a, a watch background, but never mind. One of the things that does start to annoy you with a lot of the quartz watches is that that ticking second hand doesn't always line up with the seconds markers. This one does a pretty good job. I've seen a lot of watches, including my um, Weekender, which is not good at all, but that's just one of those things it's very difficult to tell. I've seen some high-end watches that with exactly the same problem. And they're probably with some of them, there could be if you adjusted the watch itself internally, because it's consistently out, you could probably fix that. Um, what I'm finding on some of these is I noticed that in one one particular place it is spot on, which would mean you couldn't necessarily fix it that way. This is actually, now looking at this, this is actually slightly out. Yeah, that looks actually that's consistently out, so there may be something I could do about that. But in this it's actually quite difficult to to see I don't really want, what I'll probably do is whenever the battery runs out on this, I'll probably open it up and see if there's anything I can do in terms of just remedying that. But it's not, it just, again, there's a lot to do with the angle you hold it at as well. It's not too bad. So there, that's a Braun. That's um, the BN, it's got quite a long number. Um, oops. There we go. So that is the BN0021 BK BKG. Um, and that was 127 bucks. Um, and very much that sort of, if, if anybody's got one of those broad, the classic Braun uh, bedside alarm clock, um, it reminds me you know, very much of that in that sort of color scheme as well. Okay, um, I did buy another watch in February, which isn't here anymore, because I'm, I'm planning to give that one away, which was a, a Timex Metropolitan, um, brown on brown. Um, I didn't really like it that much, I must admit, it didn't. I thought it would be cool as a dress watch, but um, I ended up planning on giving that away, so that's not really in my collection anymore. So then I moved back to Casio's. Um, my first Casio watch, I just wanted a fun watch, fun uh, beach watch um, that I might wear on a pending trip. Of course, I often end up just wearing my um, Casio, um, Roy, you know, my Casio Royale as they call it, I think is its uh, nickname. That's this, this one I showed you earlier. So nine times out of ten, if I'm traveling, I wear this. Um, but I decided to just buy one of these. Th there's a series of these. There's one in black, one in white, one in blue, and one in red, which is this one. Nice and simple, very light. Uh, this is an F108WHC. What I like about them, and you'll see in a moment, um, is they've got the sort of 
what you would call the wrist presence of a, um, a watch like the Casio G-Shock. Here's a G-Shock which I'm going to come on to in a moment. So you can see similar size. The watch, the, because of the way the strap's designed on the on the, the other Casio, on the G-Shock, um, those do tend to ride a little different on the wrist. But these, you know, are a good, cheap, cheaper alternative. I mean, the entry-level Casio G-Shock is, what, around about, well, $60, $60 in Canada. You can get it cheaper in the US. I think it's about, you can pick them up for $40. Um, whereas in Canada, a G-Shock set you back about, uh, the entry level one set you back like sixty seventy dollars this these are about twenty five dollars and even cheaper if you get them at the right point so you know nice fun watch and like I said there's a black one if you don't like that sort of funky red color they wear pretty well on the on the wrist you know, slightly larger than a like a, something like an f ninety one good Canada Day watch basically okay so I hadn't quite finished with my citizen um, thing and I was after a slightly larger military style watch so you know this Seiko which I showed you earlier you know isn't that military style but I wanted something a little bit bigger with, with the more like the onion shaped um, bit on here. So a much bigger presence here. So with the, with the crown on this, you've got a very large or larger crown sort of spins freely it's not a screw down as you see on a diver like when I showed you the, um, the Casio Dura one thing I think I didn't mention is uh, this has a screw down crown on it so the crown itself screws into place and that make basically gives it it's you know better water resistance the water can't get through the, that crown this doesn't have it. I'm not sure what the water resistance on this is. It's 10 bars, so there must be something else in there that's doing it. Certainly, um, you know, never never go into the water with a, a watch like this with the, the crown out, because you're guaranteed to uh, get in there. Again, with these, there's like two um, levels of adjustment. So you go all the way out, You'll see it's a quartz watch, so it does hack the you know the second hand stops, um, and that's where you adjust the time. If you go in one, that's where you you can quick adjust the um, the date on this. You'll see it's got that style you've sometimes see on other military style watches, where you can see you know the date ahead and behind on there. It's not, This is nice. Uh, it's got, um, again, it's an eco drive, so it, this will go six months once it's fully charged without seeing sunlight. It does have loom on it. It's got um, 12 and 24 hour clock on there. And then again, rather like, you can see echoes of this in the, in the smaller Seiko, where again, you know, you've got seconds on the outside and then um, the hours on the inside. And this one additionally has the 24 hour markers. Nice watch, I've worn it quite a bit. Again, I sort of leave it sitting close to the sunlight. But you know, can't, I think you can't go too wrong with an eco drive because it's just like, you know, you have to replace the battery on it. And my, I don't know how regularly you would need to get a quartz watch service if at all. I mean, obviously there's some mechanics in here. It's not straight electronics like a digital, but um, you know they tend to be of, of a you know lower um, less of a need to to 
to have like regular service integrals like a fully mechanical watch on there because of all the other the extra sort of moving parts and mechanisms but that's you know pretty nice watch and that one that was only about 107 bucks so again you know I was trying to keep within certain uh, purchasing decisions about how much I wanted to spend now the next watch I'm going to show you so far is the most expensive watch I've bought I could kick myself because when I originally bought this this was going to be massively reduced on Amazon at Christmas time and that just happens you have to live with that um, I think at one point this go, got down as low as a hundred bucks the previous Christmas um, in Christmas of 2008 so around June 2009 I decided to check out this again um, I'd been to the UK was I going just trying to think if I'd already been to the UK at that point if what had happened I think was I'd um, I knew my dad had a eco drive he had a citizen eco drive in this style and so I just jokingly called this my old man's watch um, just because of the, the color scheme and that sort of that style of bracelet you know that almost presidential style bracelet and uh, of course there's you know design nods to a certain Rolex with this as well um, you know with the with the way the bezel is and uh, the certain style of the strap uh, this is actually a quartz Seiko um, this particular style of Seiko has been you know re redone several times there was a mechanical version of this back in the day the the hand the dial on this is spectacular in the Sun it's just really nice I mean it's a nice looking watch it's on the smaller side so it wouldn't be good for someone with a larger wrist but you know if you like that old man watch style then you know, this sort of watch might be for you the, the clasp is slightly nicer um, in the way that it's executed I mean it's the same mechanics essentially but you get that really nice sort of min minimalistic look around there with the Seiko on it um, obviously this is all just um, gold tone steel you can see they haven't even bothered to actually do it on the back parts the links themselves, so we've got solid links on the outside, but I don't know if you can see that the the inner links are basically just you know oval parts of metal there. Pretty easy to, to set this. Obviously, you just need the right tools to push out those pins because these are pins on this because it's a solid link. And the first time people do these, they get a little bit confused. You just have to make you basically work out where the split end of the pin is and where the the non-split end is and on here it's difficult to see but there's the split end of the pin so when you're pushing these out with your your sort of pin remover um, you go on you push on that end that's how you get them out and then you when you um, want to put the thing back in you just remember to put it around the right way now the good thing with these is it actually shows you on the back which way you're supposed to push I don't think you can see that there's arrows there there you go so yeah nice style day date um, again there's a quick adjust on this the crown's pretty recessed there so again if you're someone that likes to wear the watch fairly loose I, I don't particularly I don't like it too loose I don't like it too tight um, again it's less likely to dig into your wrist on there so yeah, most expensive watch in my collection. I ended up paying 200 bucks for this. They regularly go for around 250. Um, they seem to maintain their retail, like the price, you know, the, the recommended retail price is around 250 and higher, and they tend to stick around that. So um, I, you know, I didn't get it for what it literally dropped, I think down to somewhere near 100 one Christmas. And at that time, for whatever reason I didn't buy it um, and so I just you know bit the bullet and and uh, pulled the trigger on this and just just got it at the, the slightly high well the nearly double the price but that often happens with watches um, you can't always buy the watch that you want to when you want to um, because you know if you're if you're trying to budget your watch uh, collecting habits as I've suggested things can 
Um, things can get out of hand if you don't. So after that, so that was June 2019. I took a bit of a break um, and then didn't buy anything until September of this year. And what I wanted in my collection was, as you think I've shown you this already quickly, was the the nice basic G-Shock. The no frills G-Shock. You got mode, adjust, um, light, stop start. Uh, yep, yeah, nice watch. Feels very solid even though it's relatively light. Um, the strap rides real interesting because of the way the straps formed. So you don't have to have this watch on super tight to get it to stay in place and it always feels that it's going to move around but it doesn't because there's quite a bit of give on there that's a good test for me i always see just put my little finger in and just see if i can actually get my little finger in and normally if i can that's a good tightness for me but you'll notice there's quite a bit of it's quite raised because it's quite a chunky watch. Now, because it's a G-Shock, um, you're not so worried about, um, you know, having an incident with a a door handle. Um, although if you caught the uh, the glass fairly well, I mean, I'm assuming you could crack that. I've seen these um, with ball bars on them, which is always quite amusing. Uh, but anyway, the, the classic G black G-Shock and that one I bought it was around 70 bucks. Um, like I said, in Canada the fight the price of these entry level G-Shocks floats around between 60 to 80. Um, you can get them a lot of cheap, cheaper state sides. Obviously the exchange rates factored into that, but uh, even so you can pick them up pretty pretty cheap state size, I think. So we're starting to get near the end now. I think I've pretty much covered. So we've got my final purchase here. So the next watch is an interesting purchase. Um, got this for a number of reasons. Um, I will, will say this make of watch um, causes a lot of, from what I gather, causes a lot of uh, conflict in watch collecting circles. Although I think this is, if you are going to buy a certain type of a certain one of these watches of this company this is the one to, to buy um, it is incre it is very accurate for an automatic and it is the there we go the Invicta Pro Diver automatic so I've always fancied having one of these in my collection and because I don't didn't have a two-tone dial watch I figured this is the one I'd get I got this very reasonable um, I used what was left of my, um, I got some sort of Christmas money, like a Christmas bonus, and um, what was left out from that after buying a few gifts for other people, I bought this. This was, um, I paid 100 well actually, thinking about it, because I'm looking at the price with postage and packing on this, so that's one thing I forgot to say. All the prices I've, um, sorry, all the prices I've quoted here for the ones where I knew the price were actually sales tax in. I forgot about that. So um, this with sales tax in was was a hundred bucks. So without sales tax, it would have been I don't know, 85 something. Um, but it's a really nice watch. Um, what tipped me on this is is there was um, uh, one of the watch channels. There's um, a watch repair um, watch builder guy who actually stripped one of these down and gave it a proper review and um, yeah the, the review came out really well of this and then he regulated it as well and um, it kept you know th these actually keep excellent time this thing I wore it for a week the moment I got it out of the box I just wound it um, and um, it basically lost I think a second in a week which is pretty good for an automatic and if, if I opened this up and felt brave enough to regulate the watch because I know in principle how to regulate a watch um, 
I could, you know, maybe just get it really accurate. I mean, whether or not I want to get it more accurate than a second a week is another matter. It might make it worse. Um, but yeah, th this is uh, nice and heavy. Um, if you can tolerate the Invicta logo down the side and, um, there, and the fact that it, it's obviously um, a homage to a very well-known Rolex. Uh, interestingly, it doesn't have the coin bezel on it. It has more of this... Um, style that you find on some Amiga divers, I believe. Um, but uh, of course the other things are, are dead giveaways like the Mercedes style uh, hour hand there. But yeah, the, in terms of the, the timekeeping on this, I've got no complaints. Also, um, ironically, it was uh, one, one way I could get uh, this, this particular Seiko movement which in this watch they call an NH35A. So with the Seiko 5, they're not hacking and they're not hand winding. This is, this will, this hacks and hand winds. And what that means is if I undo the, again, this is a 200 meter diver. When you pull the crown out, notice on this, the second hand will stop like on a quartz, which means it's a lot easier to set the time accurately because what you can do is pull it out when it gets to the, the 12 o'clock um, and then obviously push it back in when you, you know, when you're checking it against a, another sort of digital item or on the web or wherever you get your time from. Um, there's this thing, thing, it's getting a bit fiddly on here and it's like the same with all these. There is a center position in here where you can adjust, quick adjust the, the date on here. Notice the the Cyclops is about times two, I think, on this. But I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, it's certainly, you know, again, I took it on this one. It's got solid links on here. So again, we've got the pins again. But again, like the, my Quartz Seiko I showed you, you've got the arrows showing you where you've got to push it. So really, it's just a question of getting the right size item to fit in there. And I think I took about four links out of this and did one one part of micro adjustment. What I normally find is when I adjust these, I normally how, know how many links I've got to take out of it. Um, and it's normally three to four on a lot of these watches. Take them out, see how it feels on the wrist, do the micro adjustment. And then about a day later, I might do a further adjustment. On one watch at least, I ended up... Um, pushing back the micro adjustment to where it was originally and then actually taking an extra link out. Um, so I have this upside down, don't I? That's, that's funny when you do so and so. There's my upside down. Uh, let's get this right way up. Once it's in place, the clasp is fairly good. Um, the thing you've got to watch out for is when this thing pops off. So as long as that's in place, it's fairly solid. But even without it, this, yeah, that's actually, so it, it's basically, you know, if you look at it, it's not like the Seiko where you've got the bits on the side that you push in. It has this extra thing which sort of holds it in place that stops it from accidentally unclipping from there. But, the, you know, the strap's pretty good and I like it, which is the main thing. You know, buy what you like and uh, wear it a lot, basically. So this one I've been wearing pretty much solidly for the past month. I think I mentioned the price. It's a yeah, it was around around 101 when I bought it. They're very shiny. Um, the this on here is just a regular uh, glass crystal on here. It's not like on a Seiko Five. It's not hard lex or anything like that. But it it seems to me it's just super shiny on there. So yeah, and that is the last of the collection, the state of the collection for 2019. So let's just do first and last. So we started off with the Timex Expedition. 
and ended up with the Invicta Pro Diver. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, foray into my watch collecting uh, shenanigans. Um, hopefully the watch collection won't expand too much. Um, in terms of where it's going, um, one, one type of watch that I haven't explored yet, which I know um, often seen as a little bit of a step up from the Seiko Fives, because the particular make of watch has, um, in its current iteration, has hacking and hand winding, um, is, is the Orient series, so the Orient Bambinos, um, that sort of line of watches. There's some interesting styles of watches in there, particularly the ones that look like the classic um, sort of World War II naval watch, um, you know, very much in that style of the original Omega um, Seamasters with uh, with those sort of nice domed sort of crystal and the, and there's got a certain shape to the uh, to the markers which I really like and I'm trying to find a watch that's even close to that and as I don't have one I think the purchase of a one of the Orients is probably going to be inevitable next year. In terms of what might leave the collection, um, I'm not sure at the moment. Um, I might thinking about giving uh, my Timex Weekender to a family friend um, you know it, it's a good watch actually for anybody in, in in your family that has problems reading dials because it's really super clear they do another one of these called the easy reader which has even bigger um, numerals on it so yeah, that's something to watch out for. I wouldn't mind having a a Roman numeral watch back in my collection because that's my the one that I gave my wife, the Seconda, that has the Russian movement in it. That did have uh, Roman numerals on it. So it's quite possible I might uh, try and find a, an Orient or I think there's a uh, one of the... There was a Seiko 5 that I saw although I didn't want to add to my five Seiko fives, um, which was, which was, which had that style of uh, numerals on it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.